The friend areas from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon are just great. We get to roam around all these unique, wonderful, artistic environments and visit the Pokemon that have joined our team. The more inhabitants we recruit, the more alive it feels. It is truly a sight to behold. There's a good reason why I've been posting them on my community tab, despite mainly making videos about Sonic. And I'm not the only one who thinks this way, it's a fan-favorite feature that has hooked everyone since it debuted. And we're just begging for them to make a grand return in a future title. And yet, with all that said, there hasn't been anyone who's talked about them on here. You got some people who show off all the habitats, but they never go into detail about what they think makes the area so memorable. Therefore, I wanted to not only discuss, but also rank every single friend area. All 57 of them! The biggest factor on their placement will be their visuals. How eccentric do they look? Did they add any small details? ETC? Mainly that kind of stuff, but for a couple of them I'll also talk about a few other things if I feel like it. Some of these will only have a paragraph about them, while others, well, there's gonna be a lot more to dissect. One thing I need to make clear is, even though this is a tier list, I still think all of them are good in their own right. Even the ones in D rank that I'm going to trash talk. Actually, let's go over the tiers real quick so you have an idea. D is the weakest. They're boring, they don't really stand out, or maybe they just have a lot of things going against them. C is a step up from D. There's more things happening, and while there might not be any bad things, it's still a bit bland. B is solid. It looks pleasing, and it does some interesting things. A is wonderful. They're just missing that certain wow factor to boost it into S rank. And of course, S is the highest rank. It's a masterpiece. Absolutely marvelous. When I'm about to finish everything I need to say, the tier it will be placed in will appear in the top left corner. These are just my dumb personal takes, so if you have your own tiering in mind, you can click that pretty little link in the description. It'll take you to a tier list maker that I created for this specific video. Now without further ado... Let's dive into these in alphabetical order, starting with Age Chamber AN and Age Chamber O question mark. We can talk about them together, they're both homes to the unknown and are extremely similar in appearance. These are the only ones that give off an advanced ancient civilization vibe. The cracks on the floor and the unknown hieroglyphs look old-timey, but the glowing symbols on the podium and the wall feels futuristic, and the rubble around said podium adds a sense of abandonment, almost like this place was attacked thousands of years ago. It makes sense for both of them to look alike, but I wish there were more differences instead of just the blue and green symbols. I'll put A, N, and B tier, while O question mark gets to go in C. I think the blue glow is a nice subtle addition, but making it green kinda makes it stick out like a sore thumb. Funnily enough, we're about to round off the Relic Quadrant with Ancient Relic. Not too much to talk about here, this one's kinda similar to the Unknown Relics, only now with a few more things going on, like uh, there's more lighting, an abundance of plant life growing in every nook and cranny, the ancient text on the wall, and oh hey look, we got water at the bottom of the stairs! Cool, this is a nice place. Yeah, this is what I meant by, some of these will only have a small paragraph about them. Ah, uh, there is really not a lot I can say about a few of these. Bow Plains. It kind of feels overly cutesy to me, although that's not necessarily a negative. It's a bright sunny field surrounded by multiple flowers next to a big clear lake. I love what they did with that. The water glistens as it reflects the rainbow and the clouds. Oh wow, I didn't even notice how far the background stretched out. I think there should be more going on in the bottom half. We got all of this happening up here, but practically ain't got squat down here. I'll give it a B rank. B for Bow Plains. Now we tunnel underground to Boulder Cave. The stalactites, stalagmites, and jutting rocks really help out with the appearance. This strip in the middle kind of reminds me of the human sacrum. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but... I think it looks cool. 
There's also an interesting thing about the area we're able to walk in. The Pokémon we recruit, Diglett, Dugtrio, Onix, and Steelix, will be chilling on the Sacrum and the two lower paths. But right in front of the entrance are two trails that look like they would lead to another section that would house a Pokémon. Kinda seems like they plan to inhabit this place with more species. The description talks about Pokémon that can dig really well, uh, Sandshrew and Sandslash immediately came to mind, but also most of Dunsparce's Pokédex entries talk about how it bores with its tail. Eh, it's just something to think about. Overall, it's good. Ooh, Bountiful Sea. Well, I'll be damned. This sh looks like a fucking painting. I expect to see something like this in the Smithsonian, not a GBA Pokemon game. Crater. Ooh, uh, wow, what a wonderfully grim feeling. The darker coloring along with the lack of any life forms. It's almost making me think like like a like a meteorite crashed here a while back, destroying everything in the vicinity. The glowing pieces of magma and the sharp puffs of steam also help out with the atmosphere. It's a bit small to house seven Pokémon, and there really isn't much else to it, but I think it's solid. So we're about to go visit our first legendary friend area. For those who don't know, each of them and the Mythicals get their own place to themselves, and they end up being more unique than a lot of the other places because they try to make it feel like it's an actual place that they would reside in. The only exceptions being the Reggie Trio and Jirachi, but where they live in is very fitting, so there's no reason to complain about that. Anyway, we're stopping by at Cryptic Cave. This is where Mewtwo resides, and, uh... uh yeah, I'd say it suits him very well. Dark and isolated, mysterious and brooding, there's a lonely trail traveling above an endless void. The stillness gives off a stiff, cold feeling. This is really fitting for him, I like it a lot. Our next stop is the spooky location of Darkness Ridge. Oh, that's right, this is the, uh, the Apsul that I befriended from the main story. Say hi to Ezio, everybody! Anyway, I'm liking the details on this one. Mischievously colored objects, all three of the exits emit some light to show just how dim this place is, and the fact that the entrance is two dead trees. The top of the area has some tiny specks that rise in the background. Kinda reminds me of wisps or spirits. I also find it fitting that, aside from Shedinja, every single ghost type, at least for the time, lives in this haunted habitat. Oh yeah. This is a great one. There aren't any problems here. Okay, let's see what's next on the list. Decrepit Lab. Oh wow, this place looks terrible! I mean, visually it looks perfectly fine, but... It looks like no one has been here in forever. There's mildew, cracks, and papers on the floor. Half of the screens are showing nothing but static. The paint is falling off of everything. A good chunk of the tiles are either damaged or downright missing. It looks like a disaster. And yet, for some reason, this giant nipple in the middle is still functioning. Oh, hey. I didn't know there were bubbles coming from these containers. Oh, that kind of looks like a pen next to those papers. I have never acknowledged the existence of these test tubes, and they have blue and green liquids in them. Mmm, I don't know. This was going in B tier, but I think I gotta bump it up a notch. There's an astonishing amount of attention to detail here. Deep Sea Current, which is the home of Lugia, and, uh... I'm kinda split on this one. Like, on the one hand, out of all of the friend areas, this is the most simplistic one. Like, what does it have? A color scheme strictly comprised of different shades of blue, the details are basic abstract shapes, and the entire thing is just a big empty circle. Friendly reminder, this rudimentary project is for a box art legendary. There's no grand sense to it, it just... If I'm being honest, it kind of feels like a test room. In spite of all of that, I still think it works in a vacuum. 
Like, even though I was fussing about it not looking super complex, I, I still think it looks appealing. In fact, it kind of reminds me of an abstract drawing. And I do like the stray beams of light. It gives off the feeling that we're deep underneath the ocean. Uh, I, uh, B? No, C. I would definitely put this higher, but it looks way too elementary, especially for an important Pokemon. All right, now we have deep sea floor. Oh, he <laughs> pretty lotus. It's blowing bubbles. I love it. I'm a big sucker for the aqua coloring and the pleasantly faint environment. The place managed to successfully look like it's being illuminated by the plant life. Look, they even got little light effects on the white plumed anemone. Oh, this one is eye candy. I know I haven't gone into great detail with this one, but I just like admiring how it looks. It's beautiful. Just like you, fellow viewer. It might be hard to believe, but this next one, Dragon Cave, tells a story. It's the signature home of the Salamence line. I'm pretty sure most of us know about Bagon's Pokedex entries, how it dreams of flying in the sky. Well, I'm pretty sure they took some inspiration from that, because if we look at this cave, it almost seems like the only way to escape is by flying. So as children and adolescents, they train every moment that they have until one day, they grow old enough to spread their wings and live out their fantasies. My summary was just a stretched out version of the description. Lol. The actual place is just... All right, uh, there's a lot of moss on the inner circumference. Uh, but, but again, the hole, it's story building. Coming up next is actually a very special place because Echo Cave is where Mawile lives. So, you know, me being incredibly biased, I have to put it in S rank. <laughs> Wrong! So, like, the main shtick of this place is that it mainly houses sound-based Pokémon. At least that's what the description says, but in reality, it just ends up being the Hermes Cabin from Percy Jackson. Half of them do actually qualify for this place, but the other half just don't have anywhere else to go, so they just shove them in here. I really don't know why they tried to go for this theming, uh, not just because of the mishmash of Pokémon, but... Also, visually, the cave doesn't do anything with this idea. In fact, if you look at it, it's kind of boring. I mean, if we use our imagination, we could say that this up here is a podium that Exploud or whoever stands on to entertain the others, and these two things on the side can be like the balcony seats. But aside from that, there's no eccentric colors, the gimmick isn't even represented well, it's kind of just a cave. Wait, this is surrounded by water? Huh. I never noticed that. Okay, cool. Enclosed island. Ooh, how mysterious. The ocean is caving in on itself, and in the middle is a lone garble of rocks. I don't know why, the idea of this island intrigues me, and I adore how they translated it into the game. How they animated the water pouring into the abyss as it glistens atop, accompanied by the many rays of sunlight. It may be small, it may be simple, but I'd say it does leave an impact. It's definitely worth the 20 plus attempts I did to recruit Deoxys. I will say it would definitely be more fitting for him to have a space theme, because we actually don't have that in this game, but what we got, I'm still very pleased with. Energetic Forest. This one's gonna be short and sweet. It's bursting with energy. Literally, look at those golden orbs fluttering. They call it elemental energy. I'm also liking how bright it shines, and how it makes us feel tiny with its ginormous scale. It has comically large sprouts and towering trees and lima bean green greenery. That is... Did I really type that in? Lima bean green, the adjective, greenery, the noun. I don't even know how to properly end this, um... So y'all ever notice how the sick sheik sick sheep is sick? Final Island. Wow, this place kinda reminds me of Hidden Land from the sequel. Sadly, aside from that, this place ain't doing it for me. 
I do like the floating island concept, but it's kind of lifeless. Maybe adding some form of movement to the foundation would help it out. I also don't think the background should be stationary. The camera is in a position where we're looking on top of the island, so I feel like the ocean and the sky should be moving with us, not staying still. It feels odd, like, am I the only one that sees this? It's a cute idea, just a less than stellar execution. Flyaway Forest is up next. Ooh, woo, woo, woo. This is a this is a huge tree. Wow, it's so high up I can't even see the ground. It's like this was meant for a civilization of birds. And Togepi! A whole ass child. Ooh, they carved some steps inside of the wood. That's pretty unique. These leaves right here are giving us a nice cool shade. Another short one. This is all pretty neat. Frigid Cavern. It's cool. I, uh, see we have a chilly reception today. Oh, yes! oh my god! I love the snowy town squarish aesthetics. It looks like a cute little place where the ice types would host a festival. Some of the details are also very cute. We have a tiny trail of footprints that lead to the big podium, and a few of the icicles are decorated with snowflakes. Something that's throwing me off are these two ramps at the entrance. They curve up towards an elevated platform, so you'd think we could walk on it, right? Right? It's just a silly, observant, nitpick thing. The whole place is pretty good looking, I like it. We go from a frosty tundra to a smoldering wasteland. Furnace Desert kind of reminds me of that cutscene right before Quicksand Cave from the sequel. The background is a bit, uh, weird. The sand in the distance is being faded out by the blue, which, you know, makes sense. I know what they're doing with that, but the longer I look at it, the more it starts looking like the coast of an ocean. I think there should be, like, one more thing of quicksand. There's one in the middle. Perfect, wouldn't change that. And then there's this stray one in the top right corner, like it was haphazardly slapped there at the last minute. Placing one more in here, I think would even it all out. Overall, this place does its job totally fine, but that's kind of all it does, just what it needs to do. The only things that stick out are the streams of sand pouring down from the heavens! Healing Forest. Aww. It feels... quiet and peaceful. With how all the trees are surrounding the area, it's almost like Celebi was keeping this little opening a secret from intruders. The water grabs my attention for some reason. Might be the little sparklies, or the way it calmly moves. I don't know. It all feels... Pure. And we obtain this friend area by completing Purity 4, so I guess it all makes sense. Ice Flow Beach. Eh. Not really a fan of this one. It's really just blocks of ice on the ocean. There's no twist to it or anything. What we see is what we get. One thing that I do find cool is the fact that there are two different snow effects happening at the same time. The bigger chunks are moving faster than the smaller squares. I do like that a lot, but that one thing is not enough for me to place it any higher. WELCOME TO THE JUNGLE! WE GOT- Abundantly lush vegetation. How tropical. And look at the bright, lively water. What a peculiar tree this is. It's like the trunk is made out of spare roots and branches. Is this... Is... Is that like a natural tree we can find on Earth? Aside from the basic brown sticks in the back, uh, everything looks very eye-catching. I'm a big fan of this one. Legendary Island is the home of the Kanto Bird Trio. I love what they were doing with this one. Each legendary gets a designated section, and said section is decorated for that legendary. 
the idea is perfect, but the execution is a bit lopsided. Like, just take a look. Moltres owns an entire volcano. Articuno gets a tall, snowy mountain. And Zapdos... Has a... has a little patch of grass. So close to greatness. If he had some kind of massive natural landmark like the other two, this would have been an easy A rank. Then again, what could we put here for an electric type without making it look out of place? Maybe have his section surrounded by storm clouds? I don't know. So, Magnetic Quarry is actually interesting because it's dog water. I don't know what it is, but I just kept looking at it, and all I could see were problems. I will say I do like the little hut in the middle and how we can walk inside of it, but even that has some things wrong with it. Like, why is the entrance so small? We practically have to be pixel perfect in order to make it through. Look at me moving left and right at the doorway. My shadow is not moving. And why do they place it so close to the exit? There's only like five pixels to work with if we want to walk around it without accidentally going into the world map. That's a big problem with this friend area. It's cramped, constricted, compact. There's not that much room to walk around despite how semi-open it looks. Speaking of which, I don't know where I can or cannot walk. I mean, that might just be a me thing, but it's really hard for me to indicate that because a lot of the ground just looks very samey, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Speaking of which, I don't know what they were doing with the color scheme, like, why is the ground puke colored? This is disgusting. It's even splattered on the walls, too. Ew. And also the rocks, they're this rusted, faded beige. Like, this isn't even appealing to look at. I will say, it at least tries to have its own identity and be unique. The concept for this one is leagues more interesting than all of the bland C tiers, but I, I think it's a little too messy to be putting it in that same tier. Mmm, Mist Rise Forest. I do believe this is one of the first ones we can acquire at the beginning of the game, and if I'm correct on that, I gotta say, they made a really good first impression for the friend areas. It's presented with a very vivid combination of greens and blues. Uh, they really pop out at us. It almost looks... Photoplasmic? It's probably not even a word, but I just love the mixture. And on the subject of popping out, uh, what's with the glowing red stuff on the bark? Is it like, larva or something? I mean, I'm not complaining about it, it makes great decoration. I'm also a fan of how we can climb onto this little lip of the giant stump. I, I know it's an incredibly small thing, but I think it adds a lot. This one was always a favorite of mine when I was younger, and I'm glad it still holds up. Alright, we'll be popping up at Mount Cleft, which is the home of my partner from the story. I can never choose which Pokémon I want as my starting duo, so I came up with a fun way to decide. It involves taking the personality quiz twice. The first time, I pick the opposite answer I would normally choose, including the gender. Whichever Pokémon that ends up being will become my partner. Then, redo the entire quiz, answer truthfully, and whoever that Pokémon is, is who I will be. It's an incredibly flawed system, by the way. Uh, sometimes they'll both be the same type, and other times the partner isn't even someone I can choose on the provided list. So then I just redo the whole process. I just like taking that quiz. Obviously, my partner ended up being Charmander. Her name is Chili Billy, named after the boss from Banjo-Tooie. Uh, my bad, I've been ignoring the friend area this whole time, but, like, what is there to talk about? This place bores me. I mean, I kinda like having this thin connection above a dangerous height, but the entire thing looks... I think the word I'm looking for is tamed. There's no twist to it, everything's static, a lot of the same generic color. It doesn't really do anything to pop out, it's just... It's just a cliff. 
Coming up next is another mount, Deep Green. This one does something really impressive. They managed to successfully convey that these paths are slopes that lead to an elevated plateau. I will say I am a bit uh, flabbergasted that they were able to do this, especially with this sort of a skewed view of the camera. Fortunately for this place, that is enough to keep it out of D rank. It's kind of the same story as Mount Clef. It's basic, there's nothing to go over, it's just grassy lands and hills. I will say, I do think the simplicity of the background works pretty well here. It kind of reminds me of the backdrop of a play. And our third mount is Mount Discipline. And... No, this one isn't speaking to me. It's a dojo in the middle of the woods, and it has a few things I like. The building at the top, the cracks in the stone floor, and the combat dummies, but... It's not really doing anything to woo me over. Like, almost like it's playing it safe, you know? It all looks boring. Mount Moonview. Hoo hoo hoo! Finally! A mount that I can actually mount on! Hey yo, what the- I am loving this color scheme. Bright minty green grass right next to a dark navy mountains and the ocean blue night sky all complement each other magically. Ooh, wait, come look, come look! The moon! It's glowing! Pretty lights on the trees, too. It's like Christmas. Mmm! Everything looks so delightful, even these rocks. Actually, they look a bit out of place. Uh, maybe if they were in the shape of a crescent moon, they'd fit better. Only other nitpick I have is that I think there should be more things in the background, like some stars in the sky to fill out some of the empty space and make everything shine brighter. Or maybe have a few specks in the hills to be reminiscent of the Christmas tree lights. But, as it stands, it's still quite whimsical. Mushroom Forest. <laughs> Look at the description! It's a d forest sprouting in m <laughs> Pokemon predicting internet humor is more than enough to justify its placing in the A rank. But, uh, in all seriousness, giving the mushrooms all these different, vibrant colors and cute patterns was definitely a good call. It helps make each of them stand out. Also, this place is almost completely symmetrical. I don't mind the log, but if these eight funguses at the bottom were mirrored like the rest of the place, it would be perfect. Ah, yes, another water habitat. Mystic Lake has some pretty unique plant life. The purple pebbles are sprouting yellow kelp with blue leaves and glowing orbs. I love that the orbs flicker, they so pretty. Also a big fan of the overall aqua turquoise coloring and the herbage in the bottom corners. It's all light-hearted and mystical. And then we look at the backdrop. It's basically just a dark void with stray strands of kelp. It feels like something is about to pop out from there and give me a jump scare. And they didn't even cover the whole area? What the heck? I could definitely see there was effort put into this, but then they gave up at the end. Overgrown Forest. Ooh, all the different shades of green are spread out so tastefully, with it being much more darker at the bottom, like the almost black ferns and trees, but as we move up to the top, it starts to lighten up and become much fainter. And while we're still looking up here, I'm liking the background. It's done very nicely. It makes the forest seem much more expansive, like, like there's more to explore. The art style as a whole is kind of remarkable. It's much less cartoony than I would have expected it to be. A bit short, but also very sweet. Peanut Swamp. I don't have too much on this one either. It is a swamp, but all of the ponds are shaped like peanuts. Sounds like a silly location I'd find in a children's book. I find that adorable. It's got everything a swamp would need. Uh, darker colorings, lily pads, cattails, and bulgy plantonic egg sacs. What in the world are these supposed to be? Well, for all we know, they could be where the locals would sleep. It's not much, but it's pretty charming. Ah, Poison Swamp. What a distinct purple color scheme. 
obviously best suited for a toxic environment like this, or an Xbox Live party filled with middle schoolers. All the liquids are fizzing and bubbling. Also got these, uh, these, these little stubby plants. The architecture is pretty unique. Staircases that lead up to an elevated platform, all colored with a distinguished blue. Only thing that would make this place better is if these... Bongs? Emitted some kind of poisonous gas. I would wholeheartedly put it in A rank if they did. Power plant. Oh hey, it's the Magnemite we're forced to be friends with. Uh, what did I name you again? That's right, Neodymium Iron Boron. Let's see how you've been running this place. Yep, everything in that power box looks fine. Did you paint these red, green, and blue lines on the wall? Eh, yeah, it looks very nice, good job. Let's see, the big generator is spinning smoothly. Mm-hmm, the motor seems to be moving just as well. Why do my feet feel wet? Yeesh, dude, do you not clean up? Why are some of the panels loose? And one of the wires isn't even plugged in. Hey, uh, Shoddy, do you need an extra hand around here? I can recruit somebody if you need me to. The next exclusive home is Rainbow Peak. Yeah, we all know which legendary lives here. So I'm just gonna be upfront about this one. It has the right idea, but just a really poor execution. You know, for a place with a name like Rainbow Peak, it looks kinda... drab. I mean, the clouds and the rocks are both an expressionless brown. And for some reason, this takes up the majority of the screen. The rainbows are pretty. Tiny and off to the side. They're not even a main focus, they're just a small thing in the background. They need to be more pronounced, like make them bigger and thicker, or put a big fat one that sparkles over the middle. Or, better yet, have the Pokémon be standing on a glittery rainbow in the sky. It's a simple idea, but I could see it being more visually appealing than what we got. Ravaged Field It is indeed a ravaged field. Yep. I mean, it's got everything it needs. A lusterless landscape with a dry, lifeless look, cracks in the rocks, dead trees, but... Again, it just looks like it's doing the bare minimum. I don't even know how they can make this one stand out more, it's just that mundane. Rub-a-dub River. Ah, yes, and our final guest for this video is Totodile. That's who I ended up being turned into for the campaign. You'll never guess what I named myself. I didn't know what to call our team, so I used a random word generator for that. And, I kid you not, the first suggestion that popped up was... Suffering. I can't make this up, the comedy writes itself. Anywho, this one's really cute. The entire presentation feels very kiddy, with its cutesy colors and being able to walk in the shallow streams. I'm pretty sure this is the only friend area where we can walk on both the land and the water. I have no idea why, but being able to transition between the two is really satisfying to me. There's four waterfalls depositing into the waterway, and we can see that all that force is turning a little wheel. Hey, yo, we even got the Minecraft flowers. This is great. Sacred Field houses the legendary beasts, and I can definitely see them trying to make it legendary, but... It doesn't really feel all that legendary. It definitely looks nice, and I do like the more realistic coloring it has, but at its core, it's really just a field with rocks in it. The smaller stones are in a sanctified formation around this large stone. I like that, but they are just normal stones. Uh, how about if they were carved to look like something that represents Entei, Raikou, and Suicune? Kind of like how the legendary birds were handled. Instead, what we have is something... kinda sacred. 
but it lacks a sense of charisma and spunk. So, all of the friend areas we've looked at, despite some of them being kind of lacking, have a sense of distinctness to them. Like, they have a unique niche that makes them stand out, and even feel like they belong in the world of Pokémon. Safari is the sad exception. This is exactly what I expect a Safari to look like. It's so mundane and boring. If somebody told me they made this for a project, I would not hesitate to believe them. That's how basic it looks. Magnetic Quarry is at least imaginative. This is just dull. In fact, I will be putting it in the D tier. There is a severe lack of creativeness in this one. Also, nothing's even moving. Everything is static. Boo, you stink. On a lighter note, and I mean that literally, this next one looks like it's being cooked in an oven, Scorched Plains. The little effects are catching my eyes. Calm, fluid flames, frantic fires, and the tiny sparks of embers floating about. And the early morning view fits the ignited environment very nicely. The entrance even has two burnt trees. Somehow, they made a dying ecosystem look delightful. I tip my hat to them. Seafloor Cave. Oh? Oh. This is some hot girl sh**! Where do I even begin? What gorgeously colored rocks surrounding the entire room? Ooh, they all look like gemstones. The blue and green ones are shining the brightest. Seriously, look at them illuminate the area. There is a pretty red light near the entrance, possibly from the ones at the bottom. The Kyogre patterns embedded in the floor is just the most egotistical thing I have seen all day, but damn it, it is glowing so pridefully and beautifully. Yeah, yeah, we also got bubbles. Mm-hmm, this boisterous beluga definitely has an exquisite taste for marvelous decor. Ooh la la. Secretive Forest. Wow, look at that midnight color scheme. It is absolutely stunning. Oh, wait, no. I didn't write anything else for this one. Off the top of my memory, this one is surrounded by some spider webs, which is nice, but aside from that, this one does one thing, but it does that one thing really well. Now, funnily enough, this next one, Serene Sea, uses the same color scheme as Secretive Forest, but they use it for a different atmosphere. Instead of just looking cool for a dark woodland, this one looks like it's lost all hope. It's distraught from all the destruction. The crumbled columns and the abundance of rubble are still and lifeless. It's like this place was attacked many moons ago, which forced the people to abandon the place they once called home. Bruh, I got no reason to look this hard into it. But seriously, the details in here are extraordinary. It looks like a dystopian Atlantis. Just look at the places where we can't walk. I don't like that phrasing at all. Let me just zoom into this part here. Uh, they absolutely went to town. <laughs> also, the entrance to the temple at the top is an exit. That's pretty neat. I thought it was cool enough to mention for the video. The work on this one is fantastic. Shallow Beach does two things that keeps it from being unfathomably generic. One, the water. It ain't no boring blue color, we got some fancy pale green. And two, all of the houses are, I kid you not, pineapples. Also, if you look down here, we can even see some of the houses growing in the sand. I like that a lot, that's really cute. It's quite warm and tropical, uh, I wouldn't mind visiting a place like this. I don't know how to transition into this, but they put the water effects in these little puddles way off in the corner, and I'm acknowledging that. In fact, I, I tried re-looking at this on the original Game Boy hardware, and I swear I had to strain my eyes to actually see that. In case you haven't noticed, that is the level of attention to detail we get from these. Sky Blue Plains. Ah. The art style looks quite pleasing. It looks like a soft pastel drawing. 
And the view of the mountain too, it looks really fresh. I swear, I'm not running out of steam, I just don't have much to say about some of these. Southern Island is a peaceful, isolated islet run by the Laddie Twins. I see it's got that lovely emerald coast again, and now the sun is causing it to glisten. The pillars are a bit weird if I think about why and how they got here, but then again it would also be pretty empty if they weren't here, plus they also give this place a sense of importance, so I'm not gonna think about it. I also like what they did with the plant life tilted palm trees, vines growing on the granite, and these little red flowers that I never actually noticed until I started making this video. And they're bopping their heads to a beat, I love this. It is quite good, Maud gives it the approval. Stratus Lookout manages to look impressively imperial, which definitely makes sense, this place does go to Rayquaza after all. I mean, not even five steps forwards, and we get to gaze upon a throne entirely made of clouds. And they made it with such panache, too. The seat seems fluffy and comfy, while the back post looks powerful and intimidating. Using parts of a thundercloud was definitely a good call. It adds, like, a big boss factor to it. What are these sky pillars next to us? Are they, like gathering energy to power up the heavens or something. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but I think they look pretty cool. Also, the background is a lot more detailed than I ever would have expected it to be. The depth perception is legitimately phenomenal here. <laughs> I can identify every single layer of clouds that they're showing us. Ooh, wait, everyone, look, 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 look. The first set of clouds are poofing, <laughs> I gotta say, the creator of the Anything Goes tier is living the bougie life. Tadpole Pond. Oh, 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 oh my goodness, this looks like a tank I would put my pet frog in. This looks absolutely adorable. And I'm liking how all the pathways are connected to each other. A string of little lily pads will connect to a bigger lily pad, which then could connect to a series of stumps that the froggies can jump on. I also adore the little things in this place, like the pink and white flowers, the subtle movements of the water, and the not-so-subtle movements of the water. It can be a little awkward to navigate because the collision is admittingly really wonky, but that's really my only problem. Uh, this place is just really charming. Thunder Meadow. Upon entering, it looks exceedingly simple. It just looks like a normal plane with a dead tree in the middle. However, when we make our way to the top, we do get some action going on. My word, the natural disasters did a number on this place. The lightning bolts engraved a lightning bolt into the ground. That's how you know they mean business. The thunder animations are very vivid and the damage does add a lot, but the lack of anything interesting in the bottom half just like does not with me. And speaking of does not with me, Transform Forest! This opening in the woods is the home of all the evolutions. There's an enthusiastic rock in the middle that changes colors to represent how Eevee has an extensive evolution tree. A and it's glittering! I never even noticed that! Haha, <laughs> this is great! I wish the rest of the place was as cool as the rock. Man, you gave an entire location for the Eevees and y'all decided to make it look like mucus. <laughs> Why is everything so compressed? Y you have six cat-dog fox bunnies living here. They need more space to roam around. Why are all the trees colored like dirty snot? And the roots and the trunk just look really gross to me, ew. Man, they all live in a dump. And I thought Eevee had special privileges. Treasure Sea is based around a sunken pirate ship. I really do admire the little tidbits they added, like all the wooden debris, and the treasure chests that are falling apart, and the slightly covered anchor, and the silhouette of the mast. Having the top part of the ship faded out was a good artistic choice, I do like that. Kinda wish we could explore more of the ship's interior, but other than that, I think it's pretty dope. 
Oh, 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 turtle shell pond. The design of this one is really freaking cute. It's bright, playful, there's turtle shells in the pond. I'm in love with the house in the middle. Uh, let me give y'all a better look at it. They spent way more time designing this than they needed to, and I am glad they did. It looks great. Like, there's two different ways for the inhabitants to access the roof. Using the bridge like I just did, or swimming up these steps. And right next to that is a door they used to go inside. Now I want to see what the interior looks like. Only downside is that it starts to get really crowded up here when we recruit more Pokémon. They will not allow me to escape. I am trapped. And our final legendary location is Volcanic Pit. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> wow. The other legends just had very fitting locations, but Groudon's has Final Boss written all over it. Smoldering magma, flowing lava, a small menacing platform surrounded by spikes, and a foreboding dark atmosphere. Actually, it's a little too dark if you ask me. This place is noticeably dimmer than the other friend areas. Like, the more I keep looking at this, the more it looks like Maud is photoshopped on the screen. <laughs> Which is a little ironic. Like, I, I know we're in the bowels of the Earth, but doesn't lava produce light? <laughs> Still, it has a very threatening omen. Very fitting for the continent, Pokémon. The penultimate area for this list is Waterfall Lake. Ooh, -hoo, wow, the water is so active here. All the different hues of blues are attracting, and they have little specks that make them sparkle. I love how they managed to make a single, still, light blue square look like a waterfall with only a few simple effects. That looks really clean. Sadly, that's kind of all I can say about this place. Uh, everything else is... Well, definitely not bad. It's fine. It's okay. The water is just doing so much of the heavy lifting. And to close this whole thing out, we have Wild Plains. I mean, the mountains in the background look nice, and the clouds are puffing. But the rest of it is pretty plain. Man, I really wish we ended this on a really interesting one. Eh, well. Well, okay, that was all 57 friend areas. Let's take a look at the final tier list. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea which of these are considered hot takes, cause I've never actually heard anyone discuss these, I just know that we all wanted them back. Again, if you want to make your own list, that link in the description will take you directly to the tier list maker. Hope you enjoyed me talking about this dumb topic that I'm passionate about. I don't know why, this specific thing just makes me really happy. Also, if you're new here, please, please, please stay for the outro. So many people have said that it's basically the greatest thing they've ever seen, so in case you haven't seen it yet, uh, I would like you to stay for a few extra seconds to witness the greatest thing ever conceived. Enjoy! Enjoy!